Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, this here is another gateway. Now this is a brand new one and it's really designed for people that want to have their own Wi-Fi router set up and have this just be a modem. And this one has IP pass-through and it has some other features there. Even if your IP pass, even if your WAN IP is dynamic, uh, this can still pass it through to your own personal Wi-Fi router or whatnot. And then it has uh, a couple key things in it. The main one is that because it's third party, there's all kinds of band locking, cell tower locking, 5G essays available. Um, lots of different features are available in there. Uh, it does take a couple cycles of learning or figuring out um, how to do some of that. That is laid out fairly well on actually um, Chester Tech Repair's website. I'll show you that. I'll show you a few of the steps I do to take through um, you know, step by step of how you do some of those features and what it gets you. But to kind of go over a little bit what comes in the box when you get it, uh, the antennas are not screwed in, but they are very simple to just screw in there. It does have these four antennas. They're all cellular antennas, so that's why there's no Wi-Fi antennas because it doesn't have Wi-Fi. And these are just the standard SMA connections. So if you did have something like a waveform antenna already installed, this would go right and. Um, you, you can screw the antennas directly into here. So um, that is a nice thing that pretty much all these third party um, gateways have. I don't know why T-Mobile won't do that. Uh, maybe they are eventually going to do that. What this has in here is a USB-A to USB-C cable. And that is because there's a little USB-C port there. That one can be used to actually power the device or you can use the included um, AC to DC uh, converter with a round plug. That's what I uh, tend to use. So that one can give it power. And then it has an Ethernet jack. And I, I mentioned that's a 2.5 um, gig Ethernet jack. So not just a 1 gig jack. That's going to come in handy actually when T Mobile uh, continues to roll out some of these 5G improvements. They just announced it earlier that they basically have one where it has multiple carrier aggregation. So you're taking lots of 5G signals. You're combining them all together in one unit, and then that gives you uh, the capability. I think they demonstrated over three gigs a second of speed. So, um, and that's kind of like ideal case. So, you know, but what it tells you is that basically there's high potential to get one or two gigs of speed out of some of these. And so, to do that, you obviously need a port that can support it. So, this has that. Now, it also has this little tiny one foot long Ethernet cable that you can use. I also personally have this uh, Ethernet to USB-C adapter and that's for taking this and plugging it into my phone or my tablet so I can connect to it. Since there is no Wi-Fi you do have to be hardwired into that in some form or fashion. And I'll show you some of the commands that you can do there. But uh, the other feature that it has is it has two SIM card slots. They're really small. They're back here just underneath the antennas. But that means uh, it doesn't have two modems, so you can't be running two um, SIM cards uh, at the same time. But it can do failover or it can do um, load balancing where you can um, you know, pick which one you want to be running all your data on or whatnot. So that's uh, kind of a high level. I think they're calling it the Ninja V2, so version 2. And this is available from Chester Tech Repairs. You do get a discount from, from me. Um, it'll be a uh, discount code down below in the video description. I also tend to put it as the uh, the first comment down below. So use that to get a nice discount. And then uh, what else is in this box here? Uh, you get a Chester Tech Repair uh, little fancy business card. It's actually nicer than the free magnets that I'm sending out. So I, I sent um, Chester Tech Repair a bunch of these magnets. Uh, it just says thank you and uh, something you can put on your fridge or whatnot. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the case of this guy is aluminum, so it doesn't stick uh, to that, but it does help make this device lighter. Um, speaking of this device as well, there is a fan inside there. That fan is always on. It is a pleasant sound, but you can hear it, and you probably can't hear it on the, uh, on the camera, but let me go ahead and plug it in uh, just so you know what it sounds like. All right, so we'll plug it in. I'll try to be quiet, and you can um, see if you can pick it up on the camera. So I'm not sure if that comes through in the camera at all, but it is a uh, fan that's in there, and that helps keep the device, obviously, uh, cool. 
Um, a lot of the stock gateways do not have any fans in them at all. It's all passive. So this guy is ready to churn. It, it is made uh, for speed. And the real point of this is they want to make it as simple as possible and have it just be focused on speed and transfer, keeping it cool, that kind of stuff. And I think the cost is very similar to the Chester Cheetah, which really is probably my favorite uh, gateway overall. Uh, it has a easy GUI interface. This one, unfortunately, does not have a GUI interface. I think it's actually running off open source software that, that's out there um, for interacting. So you have to use AT commands. But the nice thing is that uh, Chester Tech Repairs does actually lay out a lot of these commands. And you can literally copy and paste them from his to yours to do things like IMEI revisions, APN, TTL, uh, the IP pass-through, the band locking. Um, the uh, network mode type, so 5G NSA, 5G SA, uh, you can change all that kind of stuff. So let's go and uh, look real fast at some of the, the settings or how you do that. Okay, so for me down here, I'm going to use this Ethernet cable and then this adapter to USB C, and that's just so I can plug my tablet in uh, directly to it and not have to um, have it hooked up through my whole internet system. So once I plug it in, um, then it does have the ability and it does assign an IP address to my device so I don't have to do anything special there. Alright, so you do need to install an app and for me, for this is Android, I am running Mobile Telnet. Now, there are a few other options out there, but and if you're Apple, um, there's different ones and then if you're on a computer, um, you use Putty is the name of it. Uh, but you have to have something that connects to this and can send it these uh, AT commands. So for me here, I'm going to go in and um, let's see, I don't think it's connected. It, although sometimes it gets a little bit confused as to if it is connected or not. But yeah, I send this um, ATI command just to do a check. And that's where it figures out, hey, you're not connected to it. So I say, okay, go ahead and connect to it. Lo and behold, there you go. You can see the settings in here. Uh, I guess I can show you real fast. Is this 192.168.225.1 is the IP address of this guy and then it's the telnet port 5000 so that's what you have to put in when I set up this mobile telnet and then it's just good to go so I can type in ATI and then that will um, just confirm that I'm connected it gives me the modem uh, name there so I'm in my basement so I don't get any signal down here because I have my booster actually turned off right now but um, I'll show you how you get your information for your cell metrics and that's this AT plus QCA info command and that just shows you that I am on uh, 5G band uh, 71 and then I can do a request in there to get like my cell metrics if I wanted to but I'm not alright so on Chester Tech Repairs uh, website there is a blog and I'll put a link in the video description as well but in here he has these ninja AT commands over the telnet this is where I was talking about it shows you the different applications you need based off of what you're using Windows, Apple, Android, that kind of stuff. Um, and then here it tells you how you can configure your APN. Now it has auto APN configured, so for the T Mobile uh, one, it, you don't have to do it. It actually works uh, right away. But if you do need to uh, set it or if you want to make sure it does both IPv4 and IPv6, you can um, set that in here as well. So um, you can revise IMEI right there, and then there is a show carrier aggregation. That's what I just uh, sent uh, before to get uh, my band information. But if you want to get information about what cell or what tower is serving you, you can put in that command. And then there's the signal metrics, the AT plus ones for uh, QCSQ or QRSP. Um, and then this is where you can disable the different modes. So if you want to disable 5G SA, then you could take this middle one here and you could um, copy and paste that into the, um, the telnet command. And so basically you just take the part in there. We go back into here. And then I can paste that in and that will... Um, if I hit enter there, that will actually change the mode on that device. And then you can see back there, if I wanted to change it back, I could uh, change that to a zero and hit send, and that would that would change it back. All right, and then there is the band locking. So this one is um, something where you want to uh, not list the band 
in there if you want it to be locked out. So any of the bands that are in there at the end of the sentence, those are bands that it's going to include as ones to uh, connect to, that it, or at least it can choose to connect to if they're there and if they're strong enough. So for me to take off something like band N25 on the 5G standalone, because I know my band 25 is slower, I just uh, delete that uh, 25 and have 41 and 71, and that means I'll only look for N41 and 71 for 5G non-standalone. All right, and then he also has a blog page for the Ninja IP pass-through. So this one works on this V2 one as well. And again, you do have to use this Telnet command. So that's what the top of it says. And then you can type in the ATE, which just means that it's going to show you in the outputs what you typed in. And then um, here's where you type in, or I guess you need to first find your MAC address of your router or wherever you're trying to, um, to pass through this IP to. And you'll have to replace that uh, in here in place of the X's. And that is something that hopefully you know how to get. If not, like for me on my Asus router, I go into the web user interface. I go to like um, um, the device information in the, under the WAN area. Because uh, some of these have different MAC addresses. Like um, they might have one that's a wireless one, one that's a wired one. You want it to be for the wired WAN uh, port. Uh, MAC address and then you can copy and paste that into here and send that command and then next you have to send this second command and then finally you tell it to basically um, reboot and, and start fresh again that will um, then start passing through the IP to that MAC address that you typed in now if you want to change it or you mess something up you can always revert all these changes uh, down here at the end by copying and pasting that in there so that's uh, the gist of it, of how you do it, and I'm sure he'll come out with more commands or more information that um, you can send to this. Alright, and so you might be wondering about speed for this uh, device. Now, the modem that's in here is actually the same as the Chester Cheetah and actually some of these other gateways, but the difference there is, you know, what kind of overhead it has, if it has cooling in there, and uh, for this one, the Arcadian one always kind of seems to be the slowest for me out, at, at least for the, where I'm located. The SageMCOM is actually typically pretty fast when I have it up there on the third floor loft or attic space. And this uh, modem here seems to be very comparable to the SageMCOM on the same bands. And the real um, trip to it or the benefit of these third party ones is that I can tell it to go on to a different band for whatever reason it might be. Um, including 5G SA and so in one of my other videos I showed you that I could get on 5G SA at my house and get over 300 uh, megabits per second whereas on a stock T-Mobile gateway maybe I was only getting 100 or 200 uh, at most out of it so and that's not because those gateways are necessarily bad hardware but it's really the software and the the restrictions they've, they've put on you so the real value out of these really comes from the fact that they have so much capability in there and perhaps it's also because of the ease of putting external antennas on them that that's a big deal to some of the folks but for me it's really the ability to fully leverage the network that's at my location by picking and choosing the bands or the mode type uh, to get the fastest speed on here that's something that the stock gateways just never seem uh, to do at least not consistently and then the fact that this one always has a cooling fan I think is going to make it more robust for folks that uh, certainly have these devices in any kind of warmer environment if they have it truly in the attic or if they have it um, you know where it gets a lot of sun or something the, the fan will certainly help that so um, but this one is not for the beginner right um, the the connections the getting the specific apps for telnet um, understanding how to send the commands it is a little bit more cumbersome than a nice GUI interface that like the Chester Cheetah has and that I'm probably partial to um, I know I am uh, very bad at uh, fat fingering stuff or typing in the wrong things and if you do that the command won't work you can't miss a single syntax uh, you know if there's a comma and then a space and they're not supposed to be a space it oftentimes won't work so that's something you really have to consider before you buy this one but if you want something that is uh, simple 
and is really designed for just sending out an Ethernet cable with data, you can do the IP pass through and that kind of stuff, then this might be the right thing. And I think price wise, it's actually, I think, really neck and neck with the uh, Chester Cheetah. So it's it's not really a cost issue, uh, which some of the other gateways that I've shown have been. It's like, well, that one's a lot more expensive. I'm not sure why. But this one is really uh, up to you guys to decide if it's the right choice. All right, and as always, this is just an introductory video. So I will be doing some more testing with this and do some comparison. If you have any questions about it, please put them in the comments below. I'll see if maybe I can address them in a future video. Uh, but otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.